We're good? Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to Fitness Generation. And I'm Chef Patrick. Um, so those of you who don't know me, I'm a private chef in the area, local caterer. Uh, mostly, almost everything is done in your home on site. Um, I have about 25 years experience, uh, professionally trained, um, and been in this area about almost 20 years now. Um, so what we're going to talk to today about, this evening about, is healthy desserts. Um, and this is actually a little bit of a, of a, a more of a learning experience for me also because there's lots of, there's so many new things coming out with sugars and ways to make things less processed and more healthy. So it's actually worked out good for me when Megan suggested that we do this, that I'm like, oh, perfect. So I have a few things we're going to talk about. Um, but first one that we're going to do is we're going to do angel food cake. I love angel food cake, so it was one of the first things. So um, this is the bought from Safeway. And um, it was interesting when I was doing the, the research, and I called a chef friend of mine who uh, is in Ohio, and she gave me um, a recipe that she used for uh, angel food cake. And the interesting thing is, though, angel food cake that you buy in the store, really the calorie-wise are not much different. They really range from per slice, usually depending on the size of the slice, between nine or between 100 and 250 calories per slice, and then depending on what you put on it. The problem is, is most of this is very processed, and it will last quite a long time. And it does get a little bit lighter bake on it. <clears throat> this is mine that I made last night. So um, what I did with this is, is in the recipe that my, my chef friend sent me was um, we, we changed it up a little bit and I had talked last uh, uh, cooking lesson, um, we, I used sorghum flour in this. So again, no gluten. Um, there are eggs, but it has a few uh, ingredients in it, anthrax gum, a little arrowroot, um, and uh, what else did I put in this? A little cream of tartar, as you, as you would, but I am also changed the sugar. And the sugar that I used here is um, erythritol. And so this has a, well, we can taste this later on this evening, um, it actually has a, a taste that is kind of um, cool. Um, and it's about between 60 and 80 percent less sweet than regular sugar. But this is derived from fruits and vegetables. Um, so you can use it, it swap it out ex almost exactly for uh, regular sugar. And it works really, really nice. But when you taste it, you'll notice it's kind of like, it's used a lot in chewing gum. Um, um, I have a little sheet up here that you can look at later, but it's used a lot, but we, but it hasn't really been brought out into the public and used for cooking um, because it is, it is taking some time for all these recipes to change over because it does alter what regular sugar has and how it works. So the first dish I was gonna, we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the, <clears throat> the and I have not tasted this yet, <laughs> so you're gonna have to tell me whether it's good or not. <laughs> But it worked. It, I could tell that when I was doing it last night that it really it, that it actually came out quite nice. It looks like it's a little heavier, but it's actually not. So I was actually quite pleased because it did come out really nice. Now, what I did with this for this dessert, and I was trying to keep you know things down, calories down, and change out some of the carbs and the sugars and things to 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 make it a little healthier. So what I did with this is, and this is a lot of stuff when I'm doing recipes, and especially doing new, I first go through my house and see what do I have. Let me use what I have in there, because those are typically the things that you're gonna use on a daily basis, instead of having to try to go out and buy new and you don't know what you're doing. So that's kind of what I did. So I had um, Michigan tart cherries, in the, in the refrigerator, or in the freezer. So I thought about a cup and a half of these. I used um, sorghum. We brought sorghum in last time for a sweetener instead of using sugar um, because I was trying to get with these new things that, you'll, that are coming out for trends that we had last time. So I thought it would be nice to bring it in. And then it is, um, and then I also put in here uh, a, just a pinch of salt. Cook this down for about 10, 15 minutes to get it thickened up and everything. Put it in a food processor if you like once everything's thawed and it gives it a little more chunky texture. So what I did with this one is I just wanted to do this. <clears throat> it's really simple. <clears throat> and again, we can taste this a little bit later. <clears throat> it's just do the cherry sauce. And again, I didn't do whipped cream or anything, but I wanted to keep it kind of very simple. 
<clears throat> as, as the desserts go for this. So this is the simple dessert. The, this is 90 calories. That big piece? Yes. Wow. So, and also there's uh, no sugar because we're using this. This does have some carbs, but it does break down like normal fruit juices and sugar is much easier on the body. Also, there's no um, gluten in this because I used um, sor sweet white sorghum flour. And I have those recipes up here for this if you'd like, and it's really simple. Now, if you want, you could also put a little fresh whipped cream. You want to help because it does tend to get dry. That That's the little difference with this is because this tends to be a little bit more moist, but it, this does, ha I, I, my friend, chef friend said, you will really love the, the taste on this. It's a much different taste. So when we get to the end, if everybody wants, you can have a little slice and taste, take home with you. But this was one of the dishes I thought, this is probably about 120 calories, maybe for this dessert like this. So that's kind of what I did for this one. <clears throat> there. Um, The next one I'm going to talk about really, and since this is a little difficult or different lecture to do since I'm not doing a ton of cooking, but this is these bars here. <clears throat> this is called, um, I've been doing this for about seven years now, it's life bread. And what I normally do with life bread is, um, it's a, a, again the same chef that gave me this recipe gave me this because I was doing actually um, a vegan uh, um, dinner for the owners of eBay and she wanted a whole vegan meal. So I did a, normally with this it's life bread and it's oatmeal, um, sunflower seeds, uh, cashews, um, dried fruits if you want, um, chia seeds, uh, all different nuts, whatever, you, you keep all that in there. A little psyllium um, husk powder that helps to kind of bind it all together. Um, what else did I put in here? Maple syrup, agave, or honey. You can use as a sweetener. A little bit of um, coconut oil. And I used um, uh, roasted salted sunflower seeds. And, and then don't put any salt in it. So it really keeps the salt away from here. Um, what I put in this one because I had it at the house was at Costco they have a, a snack mix that has almonds and uh, macadamia nuts and cashews and some dried gingo berries and thing. It's a big package of it. I used that in place of a lot of the other nuts because they were just, I'm sorry? It was kind of like a trail mix, yeah, and, and because it didn't have, had no salt, they were just blanched raw um, nuts, it worked really good. So what you do is you mix all the ingredients together, and it has about, this I doubled the recipe, so I didn't bring the recipe with me, but if you look up um, Life Bread, they have some similar type recipes, but this I doubled the recipe, so it's, and then it's about three cups of water for what you do, and it comes out really moist. And I put it into a sheet pan, and you let it sit for about two hours, and then you bake it, and you bake it, I baked this three times. About two hours one night, an hour the next night, and then about an hour last night. And as you can see, they come up kind of soft like a little, little spongy or rubbery brownie. Um, but they're really, really tasty. And then I dip them in a 60% chocolate. This is the chocolate that I used here. And then I just put a little bit of black lava salt so that you get a little bit of sweet and then you have the rest of the bar. Normally what I do with it is I bake it into a loaf pan and then you let it sit and you slice it and then can toast it. And you can see the grains and the nuts in there and it is really, really nice. Again, gluten-free, um, no, no processed sugar in there. You decide what you wanna use for the, the type of stuff. So this is a good little bar that you can use. Um, it'll make, it'll, a, full, a sheet pan will make uh, 48 bars. So it makes quite a bit of, of those. That's not even all of them. You guys will have lots for the rest of the week, so. Um, <laughs> but I use it for a lot and you can, I, again, you can, I didn't change adding any other sugar or sweetener to it, except dipping it in a little bit of chocolate so that you have a nice little dessert bar, something quick that you can have. But it can be used, um, and we're, I'm gonna probably make lots of these when we get to summer and we're doing some more, hopefully, outdoor stuff to, to pass out. I assume you can give me the recipe? Yeah. So if you keep tracking us on Facebook when we post the video, 
We can give you a link to the recipe. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm going to type up a, a nice, for this recipe, but it makes you a, a half sheet pan, you know, a, like a half sheet pan you have. It'll make one of those full, and it's wonderful. It'll fill it right up, um, and it turns, it looks a little dark as you're baking it, but you just have to keep it slow and go, and it works really, really good. I'm going to work on it again a little bit more and do it into a biscotti so that we have a little crispier, so it'll be fun, so it'll work. But it's a really moist recipe. <clears throat> The next one that I'm going to do is one of my favorites um, that I did last time, which is um, honey. I love honey, and so I've started making honey now for many years. Simple, simple recipe. One quart of milk, warm it to about 180 to 200 degrees, pull it off the heat, let it drop to about 100 degrees, add six to seven ounces of your favorite full-fat yogurt. Stir it in. Put it in an oven that is just with the light on. Leave it overnight. About 15 hours, 10, 15 hours works really good. When you get up in the morning, put it into the refrigerator. When you get back from work that night, it seems like a long process, put it into a little bit of cheese, cheesecloth into a strainer and it'll drain off the liquid and you have yourself some really, really good tangy yogurt. The longer you leave it, the tangier it will be. I do it usually overnight, about eight to eight in the morning works perfect. Um, and you'll notice, depending on the yogurt, that, uh, the milk that you buy, this one that I used um, had a little bit more fat in it. I went to Glenn's and it had a little bit of yellow. You could see some of the fat. So you knew it was a really fresh milk, really, really good. It turned out great. I'm going to put it all here so everybody can taste it at the end. But one of my <coughs> friend's restaurants, this, I fell in love with this dessert. But um, this is just, you put the yogurt out. And we're going to put it most You're of it. You're calling that honey now, <clears throat> I'm sorry? You call it honey. Oh, I'm sorry, yogurt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I heard honey. You did. <laughs> I was really getting confused. So... And then this is a little bit of, this is local honey from um, uh, the, the DC um, Congressional uh, Cemetery. That um, we have some friends that work there. I think we might know Paul Williams. This is DC, uh, they have hives there. So I got some from him and just, we're going to put a little bit, use it all up, and then some toasted walnuts. So, so good. Just toast them. Some tricks with when you're toasting any nut, um, if you soak them in a little hot water just for five, ten minutes, and then drain them, and then slow roast them uh, about 250 to 300, watch them. It'll take a little longer to roast, but it'll give you a nicer crunch mm -hmm. and a little bit better flavor for it. So this is wonderful, wonderful, great dessert. Again, you could put some berries on it, um, but great protein, um, all natural, awesome. Um, next one is, and I've done this, this for many, many, many years. So I'm gonna do it kind of two ways, just to do it pretty. Since I want to make it look nice. So let's change this. Here. So this is basically just using fresh fruit. I picked up fruit that I like. I just came back from the Caribbean, so I was kind of inspired to have some, some Caribbean flavors. <clears throat> but get your favorite fruits that you like. Now this one I'm going to do a little different first. And we're just going to do kind of a fan. So we have a little bit of, a little pineapple. And I'm going to do this two different ways, actually, so you can, because you can do this, this is so that you can do this for groups or you can do this for on your own. A little bit of papaya. You know, and now we can get almost all fruits all year round. A little bit of sliced kiwi. And just arrange however you like. What else do I have? And I brought some blueberries because I, I grew up in Michigan and I love fresh blueberries, so I thought it would be nice. 
So when you're doing a party, if you want to do something where people can help themselves, you do it that way. But if you are at home, and you want to do it, everybody can have their own. Let's place everything in a little dish. Again, when you're prepping and stuff, you, you want to peel all the fruit if you're doing this. Peel everything ahead of time so you're ready. You're not racing around the, the house. And the fruit will actually then, it softens up just a, a little bit so it's nice and... And then let's do a little bit of more blueberries. Oops. Okay. Then... What I like to do is leave this here. I want to add some basil. You can do mint, you can do tarragon, are, is all very good. Okay. Let that on there. You said tarragon works? Tarragon works really good. Yeah, it gives a nice licorice flavor. I want to try tarragon. <clears throat> Let's do a little bit for here. Can you push put a little bit in there? And then what I made here is this is this is a little bit of ginger drizzle. So what it is is water, fresh ginger grated, a little bit of this sugar. You kind of do equal parts water and this sugar. Um, you can add a little bit of regular sugar because it does have a little bit different taste. Cook it in just a little saute pan for five to ten minutes till you get it just a little syrupy and it comes out and it has a really, really good flavor. And then just give it a little drizzle. Now this is when you're doing, like I said, if you want to do this for a big platter of this, just a nice big platter. <clears throat> Again, we're not doing any cream. You can also do this a little bit ahead of time. Toss it all in a bowl, and then you have fresh fruit, a little ginger drizzle, and put a little salt on it also if you wanted. It helps really bring out the flavors of fruit. A lot of people need to do that a little bit more when cooking. Um, so that's that's two of those nice little displays for people. And this is great for something, even morning breakfast, even that. The other thing that I did was, since it was Valentine's Day, I thought we'd do some chocolate dipped strawberries. Safeway had some beautiful strawberries. Um, they had some chocolate dipped ones already, but I had to call them out because they were not looking very pretty and they didn't do them properly. But since we talked about um, the little bit of color, I, added, I did add a little bit of color, the little sprinkles that we have. Remember I said that desserts were gonna be nice and very vibrant and fun. So I did make a little a good chocolate. Again, this is the same good chocolate. Um, make sure you always get a really, really good chocolate. Melt it. Um, over a little burn, uh, water bath. When it gets almost all melted, pull it off the heat. Let it sit. Let it shouldn't be too hot when you do this. It should it should cool back down a little bit. I typically try to dip just one side and then just a little on the bottom because it, it depending on how you do it, put it on a, on a sheet pan. Let them sit. Let them sit for just a minute or two and then sprinkle on your other garnishes. You want some salt would be good, but I try to do something a little bit more fun for that. So. All right, uh, let's see, a few more things left. Um, let's talk about these little, these little babies here. So does anybody know what they are? You, you've probably had them in your childhood a great deal. So, no-bake cookies. Does anybody remember having no-bake cookies growing up? So the normal no-bake cookie recipe is sugar, milk, peanut butter, oats, a uh, little salt, vanilla, um, all mixed up, lots of sugar. So I worked on this one actually a little longer um, because I wanted, it was one of my favorite recipes, but I wanted to make it different. So this one I swapped out and did honey and a little bit of this sugar, cocoa powder, coconut oil, um, soy milk, uh, almond milk, rice milk, whatever you want to use, it doesn't really matter for this, a banana, chopped up, and you put all that into a, a, about a five, six quart pot. And I have the recipe up here for you, and I will also have them online for you. Get that warm, 
let it bring up to a little simmer. Let it simmer for a few minutes. While it's getting warm, in a, in a food processor, you want to put your oatmeal, salt, and some cinnamon and pulse it until it breaks down the oatmeal enough so there's just a few pieces that are still kind of whole in there. Take that off, set it aside. <clears throat> Measure out a cup of almond butter and a, two teaspoons of vanilla and a pinch of cinnamon. And you want to put that all in the hot mixture of the milk, melt that peanut butter, and when, you, when that gets good and hot and bring it up to boil, stir it and it'll get nice and smooth. Add your oats into it, stir it, and scoop them out on little trays. Now you could have dipped them or whatever into making more. This will make a hundred of these little things. So it gets you quite a bit. So I took out, you know, dairy and I took out the sugar really for the most and changed a few things. There's not much calorie-wise difference from peanut butter to almond butter, so that's not going to matter. But I've tried to get it away since people just make, I like almond butter a little bit better myself. So. This is another good recipe. Again, a snack or even a dessert. Um, these are one of the things that I love at Whole Foods. One of the, is um, the little uh, little Lara bars or little little they're little scoops of these great little oatmeal things. And that kind of inspired me to to revise an old recipe that my mom always made into something like this. So. And there's that. Yeah, I have a little scooper, so everything comes out. You know, it's a little, it's a little one ounce scooper, is what it is. Um, so for the last thing um, that I did, which is everybody gets to go home with one, is um, cheesecake. So I, I love cheesecake, but again, it is high in fat and so forth. But I, I had to do it because it's one of my favorites. I use these jars for like everything, um, just because spices and things you see that I carry, or I just have a lot of them. I do gifts in them all year round. So this is a really easy recipe. It's one cup of your favorite yogurt. If you're going to make it, you should probably make it, right? Make your own yogurt. One cup of yogurt. Two, uh, two eight ounce packages of cream cheese, and you can use the lower fat if you like. A tablespoon to maybe two tablespoons of lemon juice, vanilla, that's it. And you can use the yogurt if you want it a little thinner. This was a little thicker, um, and then just whip it till it gets nice and smooth. I used a two ounce scoop so double what that is, and that's what's in here. So this is about two and a half ounces, actually. It's a four ounce container. Then I made um, a little bit of homemade granola. Super simple, one cup of oatmeal, um, a tablespoon to two of uh, honey or agave, whatever you would like, a little pinch of cinnamon, a little pinch of salt. Get the agave or honey hot, pour it into the bowl and coat it all, put it on a sheet pan, Watch in the oven, maybe 10, 15 minutes, about 300 degrees, and you get some fresh granola. I put a little fresh granola, and I put some fresh berries on it. Again, you could add something else, more honey to it if you'd like. But again, this is not as, as um, oh, it does have a little honey in it also. It's not as sweet as regular, as regular shortcake, or cheesecake. And I did that for the reason. Part of, of desserts and being healthy is getting used to the different taste and flavor of using different sugars, less sugar, more natural sugars than the process. So that's the whole idea of me trying to do this with, and show you guys is that even for me, it takes a lot to learn a little bit. You'll notice these sugars and what you use, dates for sweetener, applesauce, they all are going to make the regular recipes that you normally have tried or done very, very different. But this is just something that, again, we didn't put a crust down it. I just did a little bit of this, so we didn't add butter. Um, like I said, I tried to keep things very simple and easy, um, and the processes that are hopefully that you can try at home. Um, you guys have any questions? The uh, three different spices you mentioned, they all marry pretty well with the, the ginger sauce. Mm -hmm. Mint, um, basil, tarragon will all go really nice. You could, do, you could try some different ones. I just like those. Basil and um, ginger go nice, especially with the fresh fruit. You're going to get a lot of that um, flavors in there. Um, any, any fruit will go good with this. I just grabbed what I, what I thought looked better. I mean and what I know that I'll eat more than others. You know, melons aren't great this time of year. These tend to be a little bit better, so. Um, but yeah, you guys want to taste?